To the top five on our top games of 2011 countdown, Dari Noka alongside Brock Heward, former quarterback at the University of Washington, part of the Pac-10, now of course the Pac-12, one of the great games in the Pac-12 last season was USC and Oregon, and really maybe the biggest reason that people love USC going into this fall, isn't it? And what a wild weekend. If you remember, this was the same weekend with the Friday night game that Oklahoma State loses. This was the weekend that Baylor beats Oklahoma. And here is Oregon. Three years, haven't lost at home. 21 straight games. Unbelievable. Who can go into Hudson Stadium and win? USC with freshman receiver, sophomore receiver, still young, don't have the depth. And all of a sudden, they just made play after play after play. Oregon's an aggressive defense. Nick Aliotti, their defensive coordinator, likes to bring pressure that left a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups and Marcus Lee eight receptions 187 yards Matt Barkley was tremendous and having said all that up 38 14 guess who came roaring back the Oregon Ducks have a field goal at the end to push it to overtime and one of the main stories coming out of this game was end of game mechanics I remember talking to Chip Kelly the very next week I had the Civil War and he said wouldn't do it any differently we don't call timeouts we don't want the defense to realign we don't want them to rest they play fast they played fast all the way through and unfortunately couldn't get that field goal at the end. Uh, again, as you can see, one of the top five games of last season. Enjoy this one, USC and Oregon. In Oregon, the Ducks are royalty. Led by Heisman Trophy candidate Michael James, the Ducks are back in the thick of BCS championship talk. But a quarterback from USC by the name of Matt Barkley hopes to silence the quack attack. Break out the calculators, everybody. The James Gang taking on the Barkley Boys. Showtime in Eugene. Welcome to Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines. You are looking live at a sold-out Utsun Stadium where tonight's primetime stage features the high-flying Oregon Ducks against the USC Trojans. A Pac-12 North title hangs in the balance for Oregon, and the Ducks are very much back in the BCS championship conversation. Last night in Ames, Iowa, Oklahoma State stunned, and now we have a host of one-loss teams chasing LSU for that number two spot and an appointment in New Orleans in the championship game. And the Ducks are right there with Alabama, Oklahoma, and all the rest. Clemson, a loser. They'll fall out of the picture right now. Welcome, everybody, to the <laughs> Street. I'm Brent Musburger. Wow. Last week, we had these Oregon Ducks against Stanford. You couldn't blink. They'd score another touchdown. I, I really think Oregon right now is executing as well as they did at any point last year when they went on to play in the national championship. And I think it all starts with Darren Thomas and, of course, getting the ball to his speedster, LaMichael James. LaMichael well, James probably accelerates and cuts as well as any back in the country. It's on a slippery field last week against Stanford, still making big plays. De'Anthony Thomas, true freshman from Southern California, will know a lot of these USC Trojans. They'll look to get him in space tonight because of this speed right here and to see if USC can stay up with him. Darren Thomas, to me, is the difference in this offense. His experience, maturity, here he looks to safety off to the left, finds Josh Huff, isolated off to the right. Eventually, he shows the poise in the pocket and makes the throw to Huff. And Huff is another guy, number one, that if he gets out in space, he can make you miss and make big plays. Now, USC's given up over 600 yards of offense to this Ducks team the last two years. We'll see if Monty Kiffin has a few changes up his sleeve to try to slow down the Ducks tonight. Now, here's what's interesting. The Oregon coaches say they could have more trouble with the USC Trojans here tonight. And I think that has everything to do with the playmakers on the outside. Matt Barkley is playing outstanding, but I think tonight he's going to look to find Robert Woods. There's been reports all week that Robert Woods' ankle and shoulder are hurting him. We'll keep an eye to see how productive he can be. Marquise Lee, the last three weeks, has picked up the slack. He makes plays in space as well, but he does it in a different way. Much more physical and dangerous after the catch because of how physical he can be. Now they'll put Lee and Woods on opposite sides. And if you have a safety, just one, in the middle of the field, mess with where Matt Barkley's experience comes into play. He'll look the safety off and then find the receiver that he likes. But these two receivers are probably the best tandem of receivers in the Pac-12, arguably in the country. One's a sophomore and one's a true freshman. 
Guess who's getting loose? <laughs> oh, yeah. Might have to do a few push ups tonight. Loose Gotta up, stretch bro. out. Gotta get ready. Wow. And continue tomorrow on ESPNU. Well, with a season on hold, LeBron James made his way to Nike headquarters in Beaverton and then dropped in here tonight. Brought along Dwayne Wade, his Miami Heat teammate, along with Chris Bosch from that basketball team. So they are on hand. Carmelo Anthony of the New York Knicks is here. And Chris Paul from the New Orleans Hornets. And now for our conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. A win tonight and the Ducks will host the first ever Pac-12 championship game. And Heather Cox is with us tonight. She's down with Chip Kelly. Let's go to Heather. Brent, thanks so much, Chip. Your motto is always, let's win today. In light of Oklahoma State's loss last night and the new battle for the one-loss teams, how much more important does that focus become? We've been the same every week. We eliminate outside distractions. Our full attention is on that team over there, and that's it. Last week, you had tremendous success putting Stanford's Andrew Luck in uncomfortable situations. How do you do the same tonight against Matt Barkley? Well, I think this crowd will help. I can't even really hear your question. They keep me in this line when they're on offense. I think we'll win. All right, Chip. Enjoy the game. Brent? Heather, thank you. So the Michael James is ready to go. He'll have to wait a while. Chip Kelly and the Ducks won the flip and they have deferred which is a touch unusual for them but they will get the first possession of the second half now back deep for USC Marquise Lee the sensational freshman and Curtis McNeil and this is Lee from the four yard line and he'll be pushed out of bounds at the 23 yard line as we are underway and our rivalry history is brought to you by Sprint. Look how the Ducks have dominated recently. But the Trojans overall have the lead. So here comes Matt Barkley out from the 23-yard line with the first snap of the game. Matt Khalil, number 75, his big left tackle. The noisiest venue in the Pac-12. Watson. Woods goes in motion. They're going to flip it to him on the first play of the game and nothing doing. Throwing for a loss. John Boyette, one of their leading tacklers, comes up from his safety spot and brings him down. Boy, Boyette read that from the beginning. He knew exactly what was coming. I think Matt Barkley felt that he had maybe a matchup to his advantage to the field. A couple of blockers out there to be able to help out. But Boyette went right around the receiver and made a play for a big loss. Now Barkley comes up under center. McNeil is right behind him on second and 15. Hand to McNeil. Pounds on the right side and gets back around the original line of scrimmage. And Herbie, let's take a look at the impact players for USC. Well, the impact players obviously starts with Matt Barkley, the junior, who right now has 29 touchdowns, only six interceptions. Curtis McNeil, I think, has been a difference maker in this backfield. Robert Woods will keep an eye on his ankle. Marquise Lee has got to be able to step up the production because of an ailing Robert Woods. Ellison checks in. Woods is out to the left. Lee is to the right. Now motion. And there's a penalty flag on the play. Penalty flag is thrown and knocked away from Woods in that secondary by Troy Hill of the Ducks. But there is a penalty. Illegal shift by the offense. Two men moving at the snap. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Brent, you go back to the decision to defer with this crowd and with the way this Oregon defense played last week against Andrew Luck. They had seven three and outs against Luck. Maybe that played into his decision, and right away the Ducks defense, they don't let him down. And the Heisman Trophy candidate, LaMichael James, awaits this punt. Negretti had a great fake punt, but they won't be faking here in the early going. That was last week.
It takes a USC bounce and out of bounds around the 30 yard line of the Ducks. And so, Hermie, that's where Darren Thomas and this offense will put it in play. And the key thing for the Trojans, as you and I know, you must tackle in space. Yeah against this attack well everybody talks about about the speed of Oregon and, and it's it's very obvious what Monty Kiffin has to do defend in space but he brought up a great point you and I've talked about this Darren Thomas's ability to throw the football really makes you have to keep yourself honest defensively you can't just sell out to stop the run in LaMichael James so it will be Darren rolling left and firing on first down out of bounds at the 36 Two and A and makes the first catch. Lavachier, two and A, and they start to move the football right away. And Darren Thomas is 10th in the nation in passing efficiency, and if you overload that line of scrimmage, he'll make you pay for it with his arm. Defensive coordinator Monty Kiffin with a base 4-3 to start out, and there is a first down pitch on the outside. They were soft on two and A, and they went right to him. And before the defense, and that's Pollard getting over there. And, and that's recognition by an experienced quarterback. He sees that soft coverage that you alluded to by Wiley, and he just says, I'm going to take it. He aborts the play and just takes the easy throw, two quick plays, two quick passes. This is the balance that I'm talking about with this offense. And the ball is at the 45-yard line. There's the Michael running into a pile, and you can see the... Trojans met him with the committee and bring it down. Devin Kennard, one of the defender players. And let's take a look at the impact players here. Yeah, Darren Thomas, we talked quite a bit about his uh, his ability to run and throw. Michael James and DeAnthony Thomas both will look to be able to try to get out in space and see how SC can defend him this year. Of course, Josh Huff had the big play last year as well. They continue to be a little soft on the corners. Down the middle, incomplete, and McDonald. Had a shot at it in center field for the Trojans. Two and A was working the middle of the field for Chip Kelly that time. You know, Monty Kiffin knows that they've had to make adjustments because of what's happened to this defense the last couple years. They're going hurry up again. And third down before the Trojans can get completely set incomplete. And now the Ducks will be forced to punt. Well, that is a great start for USC's defense. You know, the last couple years. Chip Kelly and the Ducks have had their way against SC, and for them to be able to get off to a start and get the Darren Thomas offense off the field, especially on the road, is important for their confidence. So the little defensive back, Roby, back deep. High punt, comes up, gonna let it take a bounce, and it does for the Ducks, and it's out of pounds inside the 20-yard line at the 17. So when you come back, USC football. It's one. And the Trojan Army here in force in Eugene tonight. And the Trojans with their second possession coming out from their own 17 yard line. First down, a short drop, snaps it off, complete to the 21, and Woods. So right away, they loosen things up with Lane Kiffin on the sideline making the play call. Interesting matchup between Lane Kiffin and Nick Aliotta, the defensive coordinator from Oregon. Nick, typically a very, very aggressive defensive coordinator. Lane Kiffin, a mastermind when it comes to being able to attack defenses. Second and seven. And nowhere for Curtis McNeil as he had a short game, but Josh could do. But it's about getting off of blocks, and especially on that left side where Matt Khalil, who's playing with uh, some stingers that he suffered earlier in the week, early late last week. But this defense is getting off blocks and flying to the football against the run so far early in this game to set up another big third down. Tyler checks in as the running back. Fumble. Barkley, loose ball. I believe the Ducks have it. I believe the Ducks pounced on that loose ball. That is the signal from Sean Huckley. 
our referee, yes indeed, Oregon football, and they're in business at the 20 yard line. The first turnover, an exchange problem. Brent, not that Oregon necessarily created this turnover, but coming into this game, 10 turnovers created in their last three games. They've become much more opportunistic. This time on the center quarterback exchange, the ball is down, and you can see the recognition from this defense. They're fighting to get to that football. You might want to give the crowd maybe an assist there for the center quarterback exchange. And now Darren Thomas quickly to the outside. Ball is fumbles out of lateral. Picked up by USC at the 30-yard line. They say it's a lateral. Hockley was quickly over there. Forward and incomplete. So Second that's down. the ruling on it. DeAnthony Thomas was the intended receiver. And we've got an injured duck player at the 23 as you take another look at this. And this is an option that, Dan, that Darren Thomas had. Uh -oh. Boy, that is that is that uh -oh. is really, that is really, really close. close, ladies and gentlemen. That is real close. Isaiah Wiley is there, and we've got a Mark Asper is shaken up. He is the right guard. is reviewable ladies and gentlemen and I believe they may take another look at this I I will tell you that I think on the second look it might have been a lateral incomplete the previous play is under further review now the question is on everybody's mind what about the whistle which probably sounded on the play okay but if there's continuation and the official upstairs thinks it would have been recovered by USC, they can give the Trojans the football here. Now there's the loose ball. Wiley comes streaking up and grabs it. He won't be allowed to advance it if the whistle blew. But they will get the football if instant replay rules that this is a lateral. That first look that we had looked like best case for Oregon. It was parallel to the line of scrimmage. I mean, he was right right there at the 25 yard line when he threw that football and he's right at the 25. <laughs> is there enough there for Mr. Patterson who is our replay official down to our right to make the decision. Camouflaged as a snowman meanwhile is Mr. Kiffin, I haven't he, seen him in all changed. Here we go. Yeah. After review, it was a backward pass because USC recovered the ball in the immediate aftermath. It will be USC's ball, first and 10 from the 25 yard line. USC has not allowed any advance. First down. Well, you, you called that right from the beginning. It looked like it was parallel or you know the USC defense responded accordingly like you said the rule is if a USC player looks like he's there to be able to recover it Chip Kelly wants to talk to the head official about this so here goes Hockley over if that's a familiar name to you ladies and gentlemen you for years have seen his father Ed Hockley as a referee in the National Football League Kelly is not accepting the explanation here I think he's talking to him what you, what you talked about, the whistle. You blew the whistle. Meanwhile, Matt Barkley is out on the field, ready to go to work again. Fake, and they throw in underneath the woods, and is Aliotti's defense ever ready for these plays? That's big Josh Cadu. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about Josh Cadu for a minute. His father was a one-time Ugandan heavyweight championship. Look at this for him. And he wants us to give Josh Cadu some love last week, and we're going to give him plenty of love. The thing about Josh Cadu is that he can do a lot of different things. Here he is out playing in space, being able to take on a block and then plays against Robert Woods. They blitz him. They move him down as a defensive end in obvious passing situations. 
very, very valuable commodity for Chip Kelly and Nick Aliotti. The recognition by the Duck defense on the USC plays has been outstanding so far. Second down and 15. Bouncing is McNeil and nothing doing. Here comes the force. And you are watching a defense that has grown up right before your eyes this season. Well, I don't think there's a defense that's improved more than this group from the LSU game. And now look at that wall that they're trying to run into. The defensive line was a question mark coming into this year. Three new starters. They're now playing up to eight different players. They rotate, they stay fresh, and right now they're jamming that line of scrimmage and winning the battle up front. Nick Aliotta, only four water bottles this week. So he normally has about eight or nine up there. Stays hydrated during the game. Third down and 15. Barkley wants to set the screen off to the right, drops it off to Tyler. And Tyler is short of the 30-yard line. See Deion Jordan there limping off, but you should, we just showed Nick Aliotti. One of his big things that he's emphasized with his team this week is winning first down, getting Barkley to third and long, and then creating havoc and confusion and not giving up the big play. Make them earn it, and that's what they've done up to this point. Kyle Negretti on the punt. Number 35. He's got the wall of three, and most of the rest of those fellows will try to get downfield on coverage because Michael James is back there. Trying to send him off toward the sideline and seal him up. Catches it at the 27. Dances back. Breaks a tackle to the 37-yard line. Nothing lost by the Ducks on that turnover. And when you come back, Oregon will have the football. Com. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. No score here in the first quarter in Eugene as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championship. And hasn't that become some argument with Oklahoma State being upset by Iowa State? And they will fall from that number two spot for sure. Here's LaMichael James into the heart of that defense right there and uh, Tupo Christian Tupo is one of the defenders he's the nose man for the Trojans making the stop you know this USC defense the last two years and trying to defend the Ducks they, they've come up a little bit short they're much faster this year which I think can help them second down coming back with the inside and Michael is cut off now he Seizes daylight and makes the most of that before Dawson. You know, I think, makes I, think, a stop. I think they're better up front. They're quicker at linebacker. Look at this. The last two years. Now, there's the last year Pete Carroll, the first year of Monty Kiffin, 50 points a game, 351 yards rushing. And LaMichael James has averaged over 200 yards rushing a game in the last two years. They've gotten smaller and much faster because of that. But the Trojan secondary with their hands full. Corners back off is Darren Thomas, and he's hit on the release. That's a fumble recovered by Oregon. And Nick Perry, the outstanding defensive end, got in on Darren Thomas. Well, Nick Perry had a great game last week against Washington. He has seven and a half sacks up to the left there. He just has too much quickness there. It looked like Darian Weems was a little bit hesitant getting back in pass pro, and it made it very easy for Nick Perry to go right around him. So the fumble is recovered by the Ducks. The danger of losing it again. And now a wobbly punt. And this is going to give the Trojans their best field position of the night. As the official comes down the sideline to spot it at the 41-yard line. The field judge with the spot. tomorrow coverage on ESPN begins at 2 p.m. from Homestead Florida and what a great conclusion as the Trojans scoreless here come up with the ball as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championship Mark Tyler and he's behind Red Ellis in the fullback play action out of a power formation down the middle, Lee's got a touchdown, 
touchdown, USA! What a great catch on play action out of a power formation. Troy Hill could not stop the freshman from Inglewood, California. What a play. And this was a big matchup tonight that's going to determine the outcome of the game. A lot of inexperience, a lot of freshmen in the secondary, especially out on islands for Oregon's defense. Terrence Mitchell, Troy Hill in this case. How would they match up against this speed from USC and Matt Barkley? And that time, Lee went right by Hill for the touchdown. Even with the underthrown ball, he was able to come back and make the adjustment. The extra point by Andre Hidari is good. And the Trojans strike first in Oregon. They gave the Trojans their best field position of the night and they struck immediately. Their fastest receiver on this team, Lee, got it done 59 yards. And now they'll be kicking it off. Ball on the tee for Hadar. It'll be fielded at the 13 yard line. Breaks a tackle out to the 42-yard line. Brian Jackson with a fine return. Yeah, Marquis Lee gets isolated one-on-one. -on -one. See how Hill, the, the corner, peeks into the backfield with his eyes? That's part of the inexperience, and then he doesn't locate the football, but he peeks into the backfield, and once he did that, he lost the receiver, and Lee has the quickness to be able to go right by him, and again, great adjustment on the football. Now, ah, Darren Thomas, who's been keeping it in the air on a look-back screen for a first down across midfield. So, on first and ten, McDonald, number seven, is up there. I think going to make the stop on Bond. Much like last week against Stanford, Oregon was a little bit slow in that game. They, at the end of the first quarter, they were at minus one yards for total offense. Even though they had eight points, takes them a while sometimes to find their rhythm as an offense. Well, Michael James, the running back, sprints out on a crease. Cuts back, and he is stopped at the 43-yard line. It'll be second down, and of course, the Ducks operating without that huddle. But once they send a substitute in, as they did, the defense then is allowed to also make a substitution. Many times, Chip Kelly will leave his same personnel on the field. And that really straps the D. Here they come with an inside handoff to LaMichael for another first down. A punishing run. Just shy of the 35-yard line. And the stop by Uko. I like your description there, punishing. I think a lot of people that are not familiar with Oregon, they think this is kind of a finesse offense because they spread you out. They take a lot of pride in being able to run between the tackles when they have to and pin their ears back and run right at the defense. Now on first down, they come back again. A little more powerful than you might believe. Starling making the stop. You know, he's only 195 pounds, but he's low center of gravity. He's worked really hard in the weight room in the offseason. I think that's the biggest difference with him this year and where he was a year ago. And I think it's paid off for him. Second down and six. Huff goes in motion through the formation. Darren Thomas in trouble. Going to be sacked at the 45-yard line. Hayes Pollard, number 10, the linebacker, poured in on him. But this is what USC wants to see. And what's interesting here is the look from the defense right here indicates to Darren Thomas, you've got close to nine guys up close to the line of scrimmage. Darren Thomas is going to try to throw all day, but great coverage downfield allows the USC defense to get pressure on him. Barner in as the running back gets the handoff and Barner is stopped at the 34 and this will bring up a fourth and long let's see what Chip Kelly elects to he'll go for it many times on fourth down he won't even hesitate he leaves his offensive personnel on the field the ball is at the 33 yard line no indication that the field goal unit is coming out he knew in advance he was going to go he struck for two touchdowns against Stanford on fourth down. 
Throwback screen dropped. Incomplete. Vaughn unable to hang on. Monty Kiffin has to be very, very proud. There he is in the hat in the corner of his defense. We showed you earlier that they've given up over 600 yards of offense the last couple years. This defense is flying right now to the football. They caught a break there. Vaughn dropped the ball, but it's a different mindset. They seem to be much more dialed in to this kind of offense. Again, it's early in the game, but give SC's defense a lot of credit for the way they're flying to the football. Curtis McNeil. Is the running back. You saw the two Oregon quarterbacks conferring on the sideline. And again on first down and a miscommunication. Barkley thought that Woods was going to break outside. And instead, Woods came inside on him. And that, that's where, again, with the kind of coverage that Nick Aliotti will show Lane Kiffin in this offense, they want to create some confusion, a little bit of hesitation. That time Woods thought he might have seen one coverage and adjusted his route. The quarterback saw another, not quite on the same page, and it's an incompletion. Terrell Turner in the defense gets ready. And now there's a penalty flag. Hang on. The quarterback was in the pocket and threw the ball into an area where there was no receiver. This is intentional grounding against the offense. Wait a minute. Down. Sean, I just think there was miscommunication. Yeah, I don't, that, I don't think he was grounding too. the ball. No, that, that's. I mean, there was no receiver over there. Technically, no. technically, Sean Hockley is right about that. However, if you watch, Woods goes in the wrong direction. Yeah, I, this is the first time I've ever seen a miscommunication be <laughs> called for intentional grounding. I agree with. Never you. seen that. I've never seen that. I told him I would not second guess him often. And we enough, love officials, but I will here. We're, <laughs> <laughs> We're always very kind. <laughs> So here we go. Second down. Amir Carlisle is in as one of the backs. And they swing it out to the youngster. And he's driven out of bounds on the far side. That's the freshman from Santa Clara. Taylor Hart punished him. And we, we came into this game, much like last week, expecting potentially a lot of points. And we still may see that. But these two defenses, I think, maybe got tired of hearing about Matt Barkley and Darren Thomas and Michael James and Robert Woods. Boy, they, they, both of these defenses have shown up and with a bad, bad intentions and a bad mood. Tyler with a third and 13. He's the back. Straight back and wide open. Got the freshman. Can he get the first down? He does. Battled his way to the 45-yard line, and what a good-looking youngster. 6'1", 190 pounds, and Marquise on, Lee. And on third down and long, with Oregon bringing pressure, it's all about pass protection. Can you hold up and give Barkley a chance to find Marquise Lee or Robert Woods? Watch the effort by the true freshman. He's not even close to the first down. He's got to make a move there against Eddie Pleasant, one of the more physical defensive backs on this team, to be able to get that first down. Here comes a blitz. They gave him enough time, and he picked it up and hit Red Ellison. Nine yards on that play. The blitz was coming from the defensive right side. Patterson with the stop. And, and Matt Barkley saw what you and I saw. Watch his eyes, Brent. He looks off to the left. He recognizes Hannah coming on the blitz, comes back to the right, and eventually finds Ellison. A little small thing, recognizing a pre-snap blitz, seeing it come, and not panicking, but coming back to the right and making an accurate throw. Sets up a second and one across midfield at the 46-yard line. Power formation. They hand it off for the first down. Mark Tyler, he is the senior. His father, Wendell Tyler, played for Dick Vermeil at UCLA. A great back back in his day. He sure was. You know, you look at Tyler and, and McNeil, and USC relies so much on Barkley throwing the football, but tonight's a game where they're going to need just enough of the running game to make Nick Aliotti in this secondary and this blitzing scheme respect it to open things up in the running game. McNeil is the eye back as Ellison motions out. 
Barkley stands, fires back, middle cut again. And this time it's Woods. Matt Barkley <laughs> is shredding this secondary. He is, Brent. And watch him again. Looking left. He wants to go left, but it's covered. Look how he slides in the pocket. We talked last week. That is it. Talking about an NFL throw and a quarterback sitting in a pocket, making great decisions, and then throwing an accurate ball downfield. That is as good as it gets by Matt Barkley. A first-round draft choice, just like Andrew Luck. Long handoff, McNeil pounds straight ahead. Down to about the 16-yard line. And the Trojans threatening here again. Lane Kiffin right now doing a, a really good job on this drive of mixing up the play calling. Very, very balanced attack so far on this drive where they're kind of, I think, keeping Oregon more on their heels than they had done on any of the other drives. Barkley, it's a Wildcat. So the direct snap, and it is the wide receiver, and Lee cannot pick up the first down. How about that, Herbie? Yeah, They're yeah, getting he, this kid into the ball yeah. game, aren't they? <laughs> well, you want to get the ball into the hands of Lee, but look at this. Look at this matchup. Avery Patterson, they're trying to send Matt Barkley into the third row. Where's LeBron James? <laughs> Going to hang out with the hoopsters. But another chance to get the ball to Marquis Lee. Any way you can do it, even if it's a direct snap, you got to do it. <laughs> this presentation of Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. We're continuing Dr. Pepper's road to the BCS championship in New Orleans of the night of January 9th. Mark Tyler is a running back. We open with third down at Oregon's 12-yard line. Going to sell the fade to Woods. Woods in the corner, grabs it. It's battle, tug of war. Touchdown is the signal. Patterson was the defensive back. Let's take another look at this. It was a tug of war. Uh, Patterson goes up once the ball is caught and thinks he has a chance to take it away. But that is a battle. Continues on. As we always say, the tie goes to the runner. The offensive player, I think, had enough of that football to be able to show the official that he's got the ball, he's got his feet down, and he's got a touchdown. But again, it's a matchup to Matt Barkley's liking. And Hadari tacks on the extra point. Fourteen nothing. USC strikes as we open the second quarter and this sellout crowd is much quieter than when we began. The Pacific Life game summary as we see a comparison between Matt Barkley and LaMichael James and of course the Duck offense unable to get going right now. But how about this performance by Matt Barkley. I've got to tell you this is as well as we have ever seen him throw the football and remember it was Pete Carroll who started him as a freshman took some heat down in Southern California for it when he finally brought him on but look at how this young man has developed one of the finest in the country yeah, I, I, I think there was without a doubt you, you got Andrew Luck that gets most of the attention but as far as what he can do the reason he's a different player now the players around him the receivers have grown up. He started with three new offensive linemen, two freshman tight ends. Marquise Lee was a true freshman. He didn't have a tailback that was healthy until uh, McNeil stepped up. The players around him have improved. And this is kind of a memo to the AP voters. Go back and look at your ballot. This is the most underrated team in college football. They're ranked at 18 this week in the AP. They're kind of out of sight, out of mind because of the postseason ban. We've got a long way to go in this game, but this is not a shock. USC's got some athletes. Let me follow you up on the AP. They're not eligible in the BCS poll, but they are in the Associated Press. Let me just follow up Herbie's comment. The other fellows are not going to vote for him. This, in effect, is USC's bowl game. Wide open on the return. And down at the 20-yard line is Jackson. And we go for an update. Here's Robert Flores in the studio.
All right, Robert, and here on first down, Darren Thomas keeps it himself. A 12-yard gain and a first down, and he runs into the bench over there on the far side. And so that time, Darren Thomas kept it. And Darren Thomas is going to have to run the football. He only has 33 rushing attempts on the year. Defense has almost forgotten that he's a runner because of James and so many other playmakers. But tonight against this defense, at some point, he's going to have to make those kind of plays. Now they come off the inside and off to James. He picks up four yards on that first down carry. This SC defense determined to gang tackle Kenyon Barner, LaMichael James. When DeAnthony Thomas gets into the game and he has a chance to run the football, they are attacking the running backs, which opens things up for the quarterback run game. Penetration by the defense, and they beat it on the pitch. Still short of the first down. Pollard, Hayes Pollard, number 10, comes up and makes a stop. And, folks, he is a story. Out of Crenshaw High School, he was a teammate of number six, DeAnthony Thomas. And, of course, Pollard all along thought that Thomas was going to join the Trojans. So he's been looking for number six. And at some point tonight, they're good buddies. They'll collide. Here comes the handoff. First down. Squirting free to the 47-yard line is James. And again, it is Hayes Pillar. And watch the cut by LaMichael James right there. He's able to feel that on the back side, and he's able to get back there and pick up those yards. SC did a good job to the left side of the offense, but against LaMichael James, you've got to be able to play the whole field. He found the hole on the back side. LaMichael takes a breather. Barner is in. Number 24 gets the call as he comes across midfield. And Lamar Dawson, the freshman linebacker, he's number 55. He's out of Junction City, Kentucky. And he makes a stop for the Trojans. Boy, T.J. McDonald. Uh, you see Isaiah Wiley. A lot of these guys in the secondary are starting to creep up. Second and seven. They run a quick pitch out to the right side to Barner. Barner's going to be run out of bounds on that play. And... Now we will come up with a third down. Mentioned Wiley, McDonald, Starling, 29. They are getting the secondary involved in run support, which is great when it's working. It's also a bit of a risk because, again, if Thomas's ability, they're going to try to go downfield with some play-action looks and try to get you out of position and try to hit a big play in a pass game. Three wide left side. They come back with the running play and nothing doing a penalty flag. Comes flying in as Barner is stopped. The John Harris, number 98, making the defensive play. He's a 310 pounder. That yeah. rascal, he brings some they weight got, there. They got a holding here. It looks like on Grassou, the center. Holding by the offense, number 55, Bear Hug. 10 yards, replay, third down. That's a good Bear hug. Bear hug. That's, a That's good what one. he did. I like it that. It wasn't just holding. I saw it myself. I like that description. And it's, watch it. Watch it right in the middle, the center, 55. That, watch, that's a bear hug. No question. That's not a hold. <laughs> that away, Sean. I like those descriptions. Yeah, teach your daddy Remember his dad giving that? him the business? Oh, no. <laughs> was that what that one hit? <laughs> no, I was okay. Like, okay, there were a few referees <laughs> who had given him the business through the year. And Darren comes back. In short of a first down, Josh Huff was the intended receiver. Now Made get, the catch. They are across as, midfield, and now as, quickly the punt team runs onto the field. As much as Chip would like to go for this, you look at the scoreboard, and you look at the field position, and the way yes. USC's defense is played, just too big a risk here, and SC's going to get the ball back. I think you made the key point. Risk against this defense. Yeah. He, would, he didn't do that against Stanford. He went for it right away from midfield. Not here tonight. Monty Kiffin with this defense and a little more speed than perhaps Stanford had. They're causing some problems. A fair catch at the 15-yard line. And so when you come back to Eugene, Matt Barkley and the Trojans with a two-touchdown lead will have the ball again. Let's go, SC! From Eugene, Oregon. The USC Trojans taking on the number four Oregon Ducks due to time constraints for moving ahead in our coverage. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com.
the 2012 Ford F-150 with available EcoBoost. Visit Ford.com slash Big Score to learn more. And Wendy's Asiago Ranch Chicken Club. Harvey, that's Alcea Falls nestled along the South Fork. Alcea River here in that's Oregon. Beautiful. It's part of the beautiful scenery around here. And, uh, so on first down, Michael James comes straight ahead and you take a look at, uh, boy, this is great defense. It so sure far. is. They, they've done a remarkable job. You can see the last two possessions, some adjustments. They've been able to maintain a drive seven t seven plays the last two times. And there's a quick screen to the outside for a first down, and that, for the first time, is DeAnthony Thomas making his presence felt. They finally get the ball in the hands of number six, the freshman, and there's his nickname. Snoop Dogg gave it to him when he was a Pop Warner sensation. Played in Snoop's league down there and then went to Crenshaw High School. He's only a freshman, folks. World class speed. First down and 10. LeMichael. He slashes to the 28. Pillard making uh, still another stop. How, how badly do you think the Anthony Thomas? wants to make a big play tonight he's downplayed it all week the media's talked to him about going up against usc everybody thought he would go to usc he's tried to say it's just another game but you know he's got another gear in him tonight absolutely and here comes lamichael looking for his other gear sideline but he's short of the first down one of the things that you think about lamichael james when you watch him is how good a third down back he can be at the next level has great hands and he's the kind of rascal that you can slip in between tackles and a third down back can last a long time in the NFL here's Kenyon Barner in there to give him a blow right now with third down and two and Barner picks his way first down to the 35 yard line but nothing's coming easy against this Trojan defense. Well, you and I have called some games with Oregon. Look at the pit. Look at the battle up front with the defensive line. People have talked about when Oregon's gone up against Ohio State in the Rose Bowl, LSU earlier this year, Auburn last year, the battle up front, the defensive lines, the difference, that's how you stop Oregon. And right now, that's what SC's doing. Play action. Thomas wide open. Across midfield. And that is Colt Lyola. He is a freshman from Hillsborough, Oregon. He had a sensational high school career. We talked a lot about what happens if you get crowded into the line of scrimmage, create some confusion. You've got three freshman linebackers. One of the linebackers in that case looked like Lamar Dawson may have been out of position, but you get lulled to sleep by defending that run. You're so disciplined. All of a sudden, the play action's there. Another play action, middle open, got it. Touchdown, DeAnthony Thomas, Black Mamba strikes. And now, after every first touchdown, they set up for a two. But if it's not there, they'll bring them back together. And they will settle for the traditional extra point. Alejandro Maldonado, he read the defense. They did not give him the play. The Trojans were ready. And it's a seven-point game. You give the young man from Crenshaw High School this much daylight and just put the six in the scoring column. Harvey, who's the last running back? Oh, I know man. you've emceed that dinner down there in I Dallas do. for the Doak Walker I, I, folks. I do. It's between one or two guys. I'm, I'm going to guess Ricky Williams. That's a very good guess, okay? That means I'm but wrong. Right. Darren McFadden. However, yeah. however, Ricky Williams did win it back-to-back -back years, okay? So that's why I say it was a very good guess. Not bad. I know. Not bad. Terrific. Darren McFadden of Arkansas.
Arkansas, the last one. Well, Michael James is trying to do just that. Here comes Lee. He's got a 59-yard touchdown tonight. Breaks free. Still coming. 30, 35. At the angle, he's pushed out of bounds near midfield. What a terrific return. But let's take a look at that touchdown. Well, one of the things that happens, here's T.J. McDonald, the run, 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 the coming up and run support so much that watch what happens. He should be dropping back into coverage, but he comes up into run support. And by doing that, he leaves the, the back part of the defense vacated, and it makes it for an easy throw. SC does exactly what they need to do on their ensuing kickoff. Marquise Lee breaks tackles, picks up yards, shows you the speed. He did that last week as well against Washington. Broke the second half kickoff for a TD. Quick screen to Carswell. And Carswell out of bounds at about the 48 yard line. Michael Clay, the fine linebacker for the Ducks, is there defensively. But because of that kickoff return, the Trojans are in Oregon territory. Very balanced attack right now for Matt Barkley. 27 plays, 12 runs, and 15 passes. Young Amir Carlisle checks into the backfield. Barkley looks back and uh, short of the first down, and he puts the ball in Telfer's hands. Probably the most impressive thing about Barkley is he's not selfish. He doesn't get greedy. He's not always looking for that home run ball. And like any quarterback early in his career, he was a lot of times guilty of trying to get the ball, forcing it downfield. Now he's doing a great job. If, if it's an underneath throw, you take the throw. You just kind of methodically move the ball and take your shots when they're there. Here's a third and three, and Tyler's into that backfield. Here comes Tyler, got the first down, and it is a big one. On that third and three, the Trojans are at the 38-yard line of the Ducks. It's a good job running into a nine-man front, and you can tell right now that Mark Tyler's healthy. And when Mark Tyler is healthy, he's 230 pounds. He's able to lower his shoulder and give them a real difference maker in those short yardage situations. He compliments Curtis McNeil very well back there. Now McNeil does check back into that backfield. And Ellison is the fullback. Now he goes to the right side as a receiver. Barkley pump fake goes far side. Caught. It's Lee again. Breaks to the six-yard line before the Ducks can finally get him down. John Boyette. Oh, my. Watch what the, a big timer. Watch the adjustment here by Marquise Lee. And again, they're going after the freshman, Troy Hill. The ball is thrown. There's a safety behind to help. But you see, Hill never finds the football. Marquise Lee adjusts back to the ball. And what I love, Brent, is he doesn't give up on the play. He's still looking to fight and use his strength to try to get the ball into the end zone. Now can the Trojans punch in their third touchdown of the night? McNeil the running back. There's the handoff. McNeil battles to the two-yard line. And the ball will be spotted there. It'll be second down and goal. And this sellout crowd is stunned. But it is shades of that Stanford game a couple years ago. Boy, Marquise Lee's kickoff return, the play where he adjusts to the football. Well, he has had a big night tonight, and this drive after Oregon scores, he deserves a lot of credit for getting this drive going. LeBron James has to be impressed that he was an all-state wide receiver in Oregon before he went to basketball full-time. Here comes Tyler, and he swallowed. Terrific penetration by the Ducks that time as they come up and make the play they did not give him a chance to get going well uh, th this is a good job of getting that penetration and anthony wallace coming in doing a good job of being able to get through that defense and wallace is a guy who doesn't play a lot but taking advantage of the goal line situation to get a chance to get in there but he shot the gap and made the play here's your third and goal from the four yard line Rolling right, Barkley throws, touchdown USC Woods, his second of the game.
you start paying attention to number nine because he's been spectacular and you go to sleep on number two and you can't do that and Matt Barkley threw that football early he got the ball out of his hands quickly and it gave Woods a chance to get the separation he was in motion kind of playing a little bit there with Terrence Mitchell in motion but he got out away from Mitchell and Barkley found him quickly Andre Hadari tacks on the extra point last night it was Oklahoma State will it be the Ducks tonight the corner he kind of plays it with him there a little bit and just by going back and forth it gives him enough separation but you got to throw the ball out quickly which is exactly what Mark Mark Park Matt Barkley did and then look over here on the sideline LeBron James is in the house a little <laughs> recognition there for LeBron from Robert Woods absolutely line drive kickoff fielded at the seven yard line by Thomas DeAnthony dances 30 and brought down at the 34 and for an update here's Robert Flores in the studio well the one thing Chip Kelly would like to do now is to get a quick touchdown here the last two minutes of the first half He'll set the screen. Barner had checked in as a running back. He's got it, and he's down at the 35-yard line. Deion Bailey is there, along with Chris Gallipo. Well, this defense continues to fly to the football as a group. Monty Kiffin rolling in as many bodies as he can. There's not a lot of depth on this defense. Darren's going to keep it in the air. Barner... Turns around incomplete, and he was the intended target in Pollard with coverage on the running back, and that shows you the speed of the USC linebacker. And this is the biggest difference in SC's defense this year with Pollard and Bailey as the outside linebackers. The, the way Lamar Dawson, the middle linebacker, has been coming on, this is where they, did, they have struggled in the past in space against Oregon, but Bailey and Pollard give them the speed to be able to stay with the speed of Barner and James. So on third down middle open and it's Paulson for a first down and a strong run afterwards to the USC 47 yard line uh, he got pressure from his right side but does a good job of getting the football out of his hands before Wes Horton can get to him and he finds his go-to man there in Paulson and just as quickly they come back with the handoff to Thomas the Anthony Thomas picks up nine more and it'll be mock speed from here on in on second down and a fine tackle that time by Gallipo what a terrific tackle by number 54 from Corona the senior linebacker Gallipo along with Bailey the linebackers that time and I think they've just simplified things against that 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 warp speed that you're referencing I think they just said line up and play don't worry about adjustments get back lined up and be able to go out there and just play the next play. And I think that's the biggest adjustment that SC's tried to do with Monty Kiffin in his second time around against this offense. And it is Chip Kelly who uses a timeout, backed away from mock speed and wanted to talk about it. And we'll remind you that coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report, we'll have Jesse Palmer back in the studio with John Anderson. They'll have all the day's big highlights, and there are some big stories developing in college football. Well, Michael James back on the field as the running back. Darren throws a strike for a first down and out of bounds against that soft coverage by Wiley. Two and A was the receiver, and there's 114 to work with, and the Ducks are just going to keep on coming with the Personnel staying on the field. Still two timeouts remaining. Darren is back. 
using underneath to LaMichael James and stopping the clock on the sideline at the 27 yard line. Now a minute nine for Kelly and the Ducks. It's not always about the big play downfield. A lot of times just finding the backs, checking it down to them in man coverage. Here's a handoff to LaMichael. And he is short of the first Which down. The, the clock will continue to tick. And they're going to try to save these timeouts for later in this drive. Here's LaMichael. First down, and that'll stop the clock. Bailey makes the stop. And the chains will move, and the Ducks are into the red zone just inside of a minute. LaMichael <laughs> kept down on the ground a little bit. And now the Trojans are set, and a whistle, the line judge. And it's a timeout has been called by the Trojans. They didn't have the right personnel on the field, and they burn one. Lane Kiffin was in a sprint to get down there to be able to get the officials' attention. Chip Kelly is livid that they wouldn't let LaMichael James up off the field. Let's go back and show you what the Duck coach was upset about. Look at LaMichael. Deion Bailey has Look him over up. the top yeah. of him, oh, keeping yeah. him down, put a saddle on him, <laughs> leave him in that chute for a while, and that'll give us enough time to get everybody on the field. And Kelly, understandably, James was a livid on that far side. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame him. And so it's not faking injuries, it's guys staying on top of the running sure. backs. Sure. Just a little different form of that strategy. First down and 10. Remember, 50 seconds left. Ducks with two timeouts. They're at the 19-yard line. Darren pulls it out fake. End zone wide open. Is he in bounds? Touchdown. The Anthony Thomas, his second of the game. Boy, Brent, I don't know if he had possession of the football. He's already stepped out of bounds. He's out of bounds. And he doesn't even have possession of the ball. This one was going to be overturned. Without a doubt. His right foot is out of bounds. He's out of bounds right there. The play is dead. The previous no play is under further review. This one will be turned over. Touchdown. And I am sure that someone upstairs will get the word to Chip Kelly that he's going to have to try to do this all over again. That the wide receiver was out of bounds on the sideline. Kelly is watching and quickly he sees it up on the big board. He's he brings the offense over to him. He knows he's got it. To, He's got to put in another play that this is coming back. So and, and Kelly and sees it right away. And what Lane is upset about is that they showed it on the replay board. I think what he's upset about is how could you miss that? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that tough a call. Not only did he step out of bounds before he caught it, he never had possession while he was trying to drag his left foot. It should be a quick call to be able to turn this back and, and put Oregon back out on the field. You know, Darren Thomas does a nice job here of actually reading the progression. The safety is going to get caught up on the receiver coming into the middle. And that's what Darren Thomas is reading. He sees that safety that's being held there, and he's able to be able to throw the ball to the outside. He had him wide open. He just put too much air on it, and he pushed him over to the boundary. Now, here comes the decision. When the receiver controlled the ball, his right foot was out of bounds. It is an incomplete pass. It will be second down for Oregon. The clock is right. That's 44 seconds. Two timeouts left. Second down from the Trojans. 18-yard line here in the first half. With USC leading it 21-7. to well, Michael James takes the handoff into the middle. Keeps on battling. It's going to be marked just Timeout. short of the first down. Starling and the Ducks. Chip Kelly motioning for a timeout, but Oregon's going to press on. And fumble! Trojans have got it. The Trojans, it is recovered by Starling. Jawanza Starling recovers the fumble, and an opportunity is wasted. And LaMichael a little bit slow here to get up. LaMichael James is also injured on the play. And they are looking at that damaged elbow.
But again, I mentioned Chip Kelly motioning for a timeout. They still press on here. A little spin move. And sometimes when you're trying to give that extra effort, sometimes that's when that football can come loose. But that defense line, the way they're playing tonight, Brent. And Starling came up with that stop. And then those big fellows up front for Monty Kiffin did a terrific job that time. And they will take over at the nine yard line. Looks like George Uku was able to get a hand on that football. LeBron was trying, or <laughs> Michael was trying to spin free. So they'll go into the kill the clock formation here. We're going to take a two touchdown advantage into the locker room. And Michael's still flexing that elbow as he heads up above. And Heather is with Coach Kiffin, so let's go down below to Heather. Brent, thanks so much. Coach, how has your defense been able to neutralize Oregon's speed and tempo? Well, they're doing a great job tackling. You know, that's what it's all about. And so, but we've been here before. We were ahead of these guys last. We've got a long ways to go. Speaking of that, Oregon known for second half comebacks. How do you maintain this momentum? We've got to do nothing different on defense. Keep playing how we are. We've got to play a lot better on offensive special teams. Coach, thanks. Stay warm. Well, just moments ago, our Heather Cox caught up with Oregon coach Chip Kelly. Let's listen in. Chip, what needs to change in the second half for you guys to win? Can't turn the ball over in the red zone against a good team like that. So, you know, I, I think we've heard ourselves in, you know, fumble down there on a the 20 and then a fumble going in right there at the end of the first half. So we need to hold on to the football. You can't, can't lose the turnover battle. Whoever wins the turnover battle is going to win the game. The last series before the half, when Michael James went down. What's his status for the second half? I hope he comes out. Thanks, coach. You're welcome. And he did come out, ladies and gentlemen, shaken up a little bit at the end of the first half. But he is right there and ready to go. So you're feeling now, Mr. Herbstreit. Well, the, the kryptonite to Oregon's offense is a dominant defensive line. And that's what we saw in the first half from SC. The answer by Chip Kelly was to throw the football with Darren Thomas. And Thomas did a great job of throwing the football. He was 11 to 16 in the first half. They may have to do that, but they cannot get away from the Michael James run the football. And Darren Thomas keeps it, and he is slapped down. Dion Bailey. And again, another one of those open field tackles. Yep, and, and you're getting an inside push there from Devin Kennard as well, who's had a great game tonight, a former linebacker who has moved down to defensive end, and Bailey is there with the quickness to make the play in space. Second down and 10. Darren keeps it again and loses a half yard. Big Nick Perry, one of the best defensive linemen of the Pac-12, Makes still another stop. Here's a misread by Darren Thomas. He's reading Perry, actually. And if Perry collapses down on James, then he would pull the ball out. This time, Perry looked like he may collapse down, but stayed out. So by the time Darren Thomas pulled the ball, number eight's just standing there ready to make a tackle. Poor read there by Darren Thomas. So it is third down and ten already for the Ducks. Opening up the second half with the first possession. Thomas is going to throw. He's in fumble. And... Pouncing on the ball, there's a tug of war underneath. So it's going to be forced. It was Pollard who forced that fumble. The other linebacker, Hayes Pollard from Inglewood. And the punt team is going to dash on the field. Pollard comes on a blitz from the outside and does not give up on the play. And Darren Thomas had the ball down, removed away from his body. And Pollard does a good job of seeing that and just knocking the ball out of his hands. Jackson Rice is run into, and they block it. They block the punt. USC with the big play to start the second half and they're going to have a first and goal at the seven yard line tj mcdonald teammate tj mcdonald comes in and almost he got in there so quickly 
He almost over jumped the block. He comes from the offense's right side. They were overmatched there to the right side. McDonald makes the block. USC not only gets the stop, forces the three and out, but now they get the big block punt, and they've got great field position in the red zone. Yeah, let me put it back on the 12-yard line so they can get a first down without scoring. They put McNeil in as the running back, and after the block punt, it is McNeil, and he crashes to the nine-yard line as we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary some of the stats that we have seen here those two turnovers that coach Kelly referred to were of course both in the first half and now we've got a blocked punt on top of it and the passing yards for Matt Barkley he has gone after the youth in that Oregon secondary and has had some big plays to Marquise Lee two fine receivers Lee is number nine and he'll go back out to the right side fumble Barkley picks it up, fires middle. Almost intercepted by Michael Clay. The big linebacker had a crack at that pass and sort of an ill-advised pick up and throw by the quarterback here. Well, Barkley doesn't give up on it, but he just comes up, fires it right underneath there to Brandon Carswell, who didn't have a chance at making a play here. Matt might have been guilty of trying to get out of there too quickly. Very fortunate that Clay, who got his left hand on it, did not come up with the interception. Third down. Tyler is the running back. It is from the nine-yard line. Barkley's back. Throws out of bounds. Wood was the target on that play. He's caught two touchdown passes here tonight. And it'll be fourth down and the field goal unit, Andre Hadari trots onto the field. That was the first bad series that we've seen tonight by the USC offense. And they had the mistake there, the miscue on second down, and that fade that time to Woods didn't have a chance. Pretty good positioning there by Terrence Mitchell. Barkley, remember, is the holder. This would be a 26-yard field goal attempt. And Hadari slips it through. So a turn, a blocked punt results in a field goal, and the Trojans still in command. You can see how they have shut down this quack attack, forced turnovers, a three sacks, and also a blocked punt. So a dominant performance by Monty Kiffin on the defensive side and the special teams here tonight. Nadari will kick it off, and the Ducks will see what they can do about this 24-7 deficit. Fielded at the 18-yard line by Thomas. DeAnthony Thomas with great speed gets to the corner and is tripped up. And that was the kicker, Andre Hadari, who saves the touchdown. Brett, this is really interesting. Talking with the USC coaches, I asked them about Hadari on the field before the game. Had a little swagger about him. They said, you know, he was a great running back in high school. They said, we love to find guys who are athletic in high school to be able to help us on special teams in this kind of play. Who would have ever thought a kicker could dive out there and stop DeAnthony Thomas from scoring a touchdown? Marvelous ankle tackle. Incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. When you saw Hadari, and going back to your point, Herbie, he's a football player. He had an angle, and he knew I've got one shot. I've got to go low. And he did. He got him by the ankle, and Black Mamba was finally stopped in an open field. Yeah. He, he has, he's an interesting character. Now the Michael James tries to get the edge, and the Trojans won't give it to him. That speed that Chip Kelly was concerned about defensively is really showing up. And they're also doing a good job of making LaMichael James, when they were able to corral him, of running sideline to sideline. Instead of giving him creases upfield, they're being able to get in position with linebackers and safeties, making him bounce it and run more east and west, and they've got the speed to chase him down. Herbie, we saw McAllister go off the field with an injury for the Trojans. Now they set a screen play. Huff, Huff breaks free. 15-10. And now the Ducks threatening to score here. 
One way to slow down this kind of speed from SC is you get them coming after the quarterback. He's got to do he's got to do the job of getting the ball out of his hands. And if he can do that, because of the way SC brought pressure, you get the ball to Huff and he's got some blockers downfield. SC is fortunate that Roby made the stop. Barner in the game gets to the right edge and tip goes to the end zone. Touchdown Ducks. Not showing the two-point formation yet. So Maldonado will attempt the extra point, and the Ducks are back to within 10. Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Sherlock Holmes Game of Shadows in theaters December 16th. And Citizen Echo Drive. Fueled by light, it never needs a battery. Unstoppable. Yeah, it's snowing in the Cascades and some of the Rocky Mountains over Idaho way. The winter is well on its way. And here are the Ducks down by 10. They keep it away from Lee. They kick it short, but he runs up. And he's got it on the return, but the coverage team was able to converge on him around the 25-yard line. That was the first time that Oregon's been able to outflank the USC defense. Nick Cody does a good job of picking up the block, and it, it, for the first time, you see either LaMichael James, in this case, Kenyon Barner get outside of the SC defense and get to the corner, but the screen before that, 28 yards, and the big kickoff return of 39 yards put Oregon in position to get that, that warp speed tempo that they love and got SC out of position on the touchdown. Woods and Lee. That's Woods going through the formation. Going to throw over to him. The corner was sort of soft. And he gets about four yards. And for an update, let's go to Robert Flores in the studio. Robert. have a chance to wind up in the championship game and wouldn't that be something for Rick Neuheisel here is Barkley on a play I have got it open he can run for the first down and he takes it steps out of bounds it was wide open good recognition by Matt Barkley and he hoofs it for the first down well the linebackers this time get occupied back in space because they're so locked in what Robert Woods can do. Now, once they lock in the Woods, they double team him with an inside linebacker and also with a corner. It gives a lot of space to the outside. And Matt Barkley isn't the most fleet footed quarterback, but he recognizes some room there and is able to pick up the first down. Lane Kiffin dialed up some first down passes in the first half. Let's see what he does here. Content for the handoff, and McNeil breaks free. He crosses the 45-yard line into Duck territory at the 43, and the safety Boyette makes the stop. Well, this USC offensive line does a good job from the right to the left of getting a big push there. Just a zone play up the middle. Some good blocking from the right side there with Martinez and Graf. Khalid Holmes also the center having a great night tonight. Opened up and gave Curtis McNeil enough room there to get to the second level. And he's got the speed. He can accelerate in a hurry. Mark Tyler reports in as the tailback. Lee on the right side of the formation. Play action. Barkley looks down deep. Breaking free is the freshman. He's got it again and out of bounds. 
Oh, my, Marquise Lee. One fine catch after another, and the Trojans are knocking on the door. And Marquise Lee against double coverage. The corner sits back there. Boyette's back there. Look, there's a corner right there. He's a true freshman. He mistimed his jump. Matt Barkley took a chance there. He counted on his receiver to go up and make the play, and he did. That's 146 yards receiving tonight for number nine, Marquise Lee. Now Woods is on the right. He's got two touchdowns, and this is a first and goal from the three-yard line. Woods coming around. They hand it straight off, and banging toward the end zone is Mark Tyler. Touchdown. The line judge coming in said he broke the plane and this might go back upstairs to our instant replay official bill richardson looks, who's looks, had some tough calls tonight brand it looks like he extended the ball across the plane before his knee touch let's keep let's take a look at this still up still up still up I mean, it, it's right right at the line it's maybe an inch short So they've set up for the extra point. Got it off. And Andre Hadari adds the extra point. So less than an inch and another touchdown. Thinking upset now. The Kansas City Chiefs were trying to stay alive in the AFC West. Chiefs Patriots, ESPN's Monday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern. So USC leading 31-14 as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championship. The kickoff is fielded three yards deep. And Thomas says don't even bother to come out. So Jackson will bring it out to the 20. Let's take a look now at tonight's Southwest Airlines playbook. It was McDonald swallowing a punt that set up a field goal and then Barner tiptoed in at the other end but Mark Tyler came back and by no more than an inch stuck it across the goal line before his knee went down. Most, most impressive thing tonight USC they have answered every time Oregon has scored SC has come right back down and put a touchdown on the board. So play action Darren Thomas is going to put it up on first down and almost intercepted. It's incomplete. There's no question that Muko, Muko was in. He brought the pressure that time. Big number 90. Now you can see diving. Take a look at this one now. Wow, it looks like he. Whoop, that ball's what on an the effort. Ground. What an was effort. A great, by great effort. But George, George Uko, again, from the backside, is putting a lot of pressure. They had a defensive line. Somebody's always getting penetration. And Michael James can't twist free. Hayes at the 21-yard line. And Hayes Pollard. So we came in expecting to rave about DeAnthony Thomas from Crenshaw. But Hayes Pollard has done a heck of a job here tonight. 12 tackles and a sack already in this game. And the freshmen, along with Deion Bailey and Lamar Dawson, three freshman linebackers holding their own against this Oregon offense. Third down and nine. Thomas dropped in the middle of the field by Huff. It is fourth and nine, and the Ducks will have to punt. And Chip Kelly is on upset alert now. Well, and that's the fourth drop pass of the night. And he's got an open man. It's a perfect read. They brought pressure. The middle of the defense is wide open, and Josh Huff just dropped the football. That's an easy first down. Robbie is back deep. The little defensive back feels it at the 30. Cut off. And he is down at the 35. Let us check in with Heather Cox. Heather? Brent, everyone talks about how hard it is to play here at Autzen Stadium. In fact, Lane Kiffin told us this is the loudest stadium he's ever been in. While well, fans behind the SC bench have been very vocal tonight to the point where the players are actually listening and yelling back. In fact, Matt Khalil just yelled back, as long as we ruin your season. So extra security has been brought over to run interference between the SC players and the fans. And the coaches just came over to reprimand the players, saying, 
focus on the field. Let the scoreboard do the talking. Clearly, he doesn't remember the noise at the swamp. First down and <laughs> 10. That place could get pretty loud down there in Florida. Quick pass by Barkley to Woods. It was a soft corner over there by Terrence Mitchell, and Barkley read it perfectly. And he almost forces your hand with this experience that if you're going to sit back with the younger corners and Mitchell, you're just going to give him an easy throw. You can see the accuracy. It almost forces this Oregon defense to eliminate that cushion, come up closer to the line of scrimmage, and then that can open up plays downfield to Lee and Woods, which we've seen all night tonight. So it's first down and 10 at the 45-yard line for the Trojans. And here's McNeil. Breaks a tackle. Battles his way to midfield and beyond. Where you this, in effect, Herbie, we talked about it in the first half for our audience. This is USC's bowl game. They're ineligible to go. They can't play in the first ever Pac-12 championship game. So Lane Kiffin and the Trojans are putting together maximum effort here tonight. And not to mention, the Ducks have beaten them the last couple of years, and I think there's a real chip on their shoulder about Chip Kelly and about the Oregon Ducks. Not only is this their bowl game, but I think they're anxious to try to avenge the last couple years and the way this game is gone. Second down and two. And McNeil for the first down. Ball security so important tonight as the Ducks have turned it over. And USC with only one, but two costly turnovers for Oregon here. You know, when you bring up the name Lane Kiffin, a lot of times fans around the country, because of his past, have a strong opinion about how they feel about Lane Kiffin. Say whatever you want about Lane Kiffin. Recognize the job that he has done in the first couple of years that he's been at USC, the cards that he's been dealt, trying to deal with the postseason ban, the scholarship reductions that are coming. This football team is well prepared tonight. And here is Mark Tyler. And a fine run before Eddie Pleasant can bring him down, that. but he's across the 40-yard line. And, of course, the fine athletic director and a good friend of ours, Pat Hayden, dropping by at halftime to tell us how delighted he was with the performance by this football team in the first half. But as Pat left, his fingers were crossed. He knows what the Ducks can do in a hurry. Second down and four. Play action, Barkley. Wide open. And Ellison slips out a play that Lane Kiffin has used for years. For an update, here's Robert Flores in the studio. Robert. Dropped a Tebow on him. The belldozer did that time. <laughs> we got some running quarterbacks now, don't we? Well, here's Matt Barkley. And he's having a gem of a night here in the Northwest. He was so happy when he got off the bus and saw that there was no snow, as was earlier predicted. Here's a handoff. Tyler, nine yards. Crosses into the red zone. <laughs> This is a balanced drive, running and throwing. Again, look at the, the defense has to be concerned about the quick throws, the vertical throws, that it's leaving the numbers to the advantage of the offense up front. And the offensive line, the backside blocks, the execution up front. Lane Kiffin so far has called 48 plays, 24 runs, and 24 passes. Just a great job of attacking the Oregon defense. Kennedy Palomalu, his running back coach, was there behind him as you looked at Lane calling the plays. And he has done a fabulous job with these backs. Here comes McNeil for him. And let me go back on Kennedy Palomalu. And uh, battling for that ball. Hang on now. Moving the pile. Many of you know him as Coach Pala. He changed his name to Palomalu, which is the family name over in America and Samoa to honor his family and his heritage. He is named Kennedy, folks, because he was born on November 22nd, 1963, the day that John F. Kennedy was assassinated. He spent five years in the NFL as a running back coach. He is a good one. First down and 10 now, and Tyler is in as Palomalu's running back 
McNeil will take a breather. Play action at the five yard line and down is Marquise Lee. How about the accuracy from Matt, here from Matt Barkley? Puts this ball low and away. The defense takes away the deeper throw downfield by Telfer. So he throws it low and away. The defender doesn't have a chance to make a play on that ball. And he puts it only where Lee can make the catch. Grimble in from the Trojan sideline. Second down. This team can get a first down across the one yard line. That's Woods. Directly behind, they scored a touchdown in this formation earlier. Now he curls it back and he's got another one. Touchdown USC. The last time they threw to Woods coming out, but this time, Telfer, Randall Telfer, the tight end, is the target. And, and you, the reason they threw to Woods last time is when he went into motion, the defensive back followed him, Brent, and the quarterback, the reason that's so important is it tells him if it's man coverage or zone. And you'll see this time they didn't follow him, it so it opened up for the big tight end in zone coverage for the touchdown. Andre Hadari. And folks, number four is in big trouble. It's 38-14 USC. Here's Woods, Brett, and when he goes in motion and he does this, last time the Oregon defense followed him. This time they don't. So right now Matt Barkley knows that the throw to the outside is going to be tough. He's going to want to try to come back in here to find the void in the defense. The throw to Woods is taken away. They're thinking it's the same thing. Comes back to the inside and finds the big tight end, the freshman, for the touchdown. That was beautiful reading by the quarterback. Absolutely. And there's the experience again. And just the, just the overall command of the offense. Just command. This guy is in a zone. He's just feeling it. He's thrown four touchdown passes in here tonight. And, and you know what? They, they came in from the very early part of this game. There was an edge about it. They jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead. They took the crowd out of the game. This team was very, very determined. And again, most underrated team in college football is the USC Trojans. So it is 38-14, 3:28 left here in the third quarter. Darren Thomas and Tune ready to go to work, and Chip Kelly has his hands full right now. It's been a long time since the Ducks tasted defeat at Eugene. Let me tell you that. See how they respond to this. You know, it's, this offense is not built to come back, but they are built to play hurry up. I want to see the attitude of the Ducks here with this kind of deficit. There's a uh, flag. It was stopped. Delay, Delay of game. by the kicking team. Five yards. Still the kick. Now they're trying to get the personnel correct, and uh, uh, Hadari, the kicker, is coming over to the sideline. That'll move it back to the 25-yard line, and so the Ducks are going to wind up with some good field position here. Good kickoff. Fielded at the four by Thomas, and they run the reverse. Fake it. And Thomas keeps it. Thomas has still got it. 45. Midfield. Can Adari stop him again? No, sir. Touchdown, Oregon. Ninety-six yard kickoff return. That's his second kickoff return for a touchdown this year. So the regular personnel stays. And now Chip Kelly gets them on the field, but they're showing two all the way. Darren, 
Fires deflected, incomplete. And it'll stay at 38-20. And Coach is not happy. Well, obviously, Oregon needed something, Brent, and they got it from DeAnthony Thomas. A fake reverse, but watch the block. Remember when Adari made a play? Watch the block this time. This time they take him on head on. Get that kicker out of there. Give DeAnthony Thomas some room to run. Here is Brian Jackson, a defensive back that made the block. But last time we saw Hadari cover that kick, he stopped DeAnthony Thomas. This time, they get enough of him to get him out of the way, and then Thomas makes the play in the open field, and there aren't many people on this field that can stop DeAnthony Thomas, the true freshman, in the, in, in the open space and room to run. I want to go back to the two because Coach Kelly is very unhappy with the officials. He believes that on this two-point conversion, following this that there was holding on the play He's, it looked like on that replay Hayes Pollard was locked up with one of his receivers that's probably what he's disputing and upset about so it is an 18 point game <laughs> Kelly tried to put it on two scores with that two point conversion Tried to get it to the 16, and it's 38-20, 3-13 left here in the third quarter. So from the 10-yard line, it's Lee. And Lee it to the 28-yard line. So I want to take you to the Vizio BCS standings, because as you know, the big debate is about to begin. Oklahoma State upset. Clemson loses. So the battle between amongst Alabama, Oregon, Oklahoma, and Arkansas continues here. Who's going to wind up number two behind LSU? Alabama has the lead right now. And Oregon must win this game or it'll be bye-bye. Curtis McNeil is the running back. Play action. Too high for Woods. And we check in with Robert Flores with an update. Robert. Those games are so big in the Pac-12 divisional race, if you will. If Oregon loses tonight, Stanford remains alive. And here comes McNeil, short of the first down. And he is down at the 35. John Boyette, the outstanding safety from Napa, makes another stop, number 20. And he's the leader out there for the defense. It's a big third down. SC. Every time Oregon has scored a touchdown, they have responded with a touchdown of their own. The crowd is back into this game after that big kickoff return by DeAnthony Thomas. That the Oregon defense must step up, step up here to get the ball back to Darren Thomas. Mark Tyler is the running back for the Trojans. Lee comes in motion. Fake, Barkley rolls, got Lee on a comebacker for the first down. Now about that play, and now Lee is barking over there at the duck sideline. The youngster will learn. <laughs> he will. But how about the call by Lane Kiffin on third down? Misdirection. They go back to the play action naked, and they get, again, a quarterback in Matt Barkley, who isn't the most athletic, but it's a misdirection to go back the other way, get the defense overflowing, and he gets it to Lee, who, again, if you give him enough room there, he's going to get separation and get the first down. Balls at the 39-yard line of the Trojans. Straight ahead to Tyler. And he's to the 46-yard line. So Woods and Lee, and as Herbie pointed out before we began, the toughest tandem in the Pac-12, and perhaps the nation. Take a look at their numbers. What a night for Lee. And Woods, all week we heard about how is he going to play. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. He's done enough tonight to complement the big playability of Marquise Lee. McNeil, the running back. Second and three for the Trojans.
Here's McNeil. And he could not get the first down. We go down below to Heather. Well, guys, last week Robert Woods caught a season low two passes for five yards because Lane said that Woods was showing difficulty separating. Well, Lane actually called Robert after the game, told him he felt bad for him, saying he, you were hurt, you didn't get a lot of balls to you. You know what his response was? I don't care, coach. All that matters is we won. Robert Woods certainly happy to be feeling a lot better and have more of an impact in this game. And Heather, you love to see that from a high-profile wide receiver being a team player third down and one Tyler first down across midfield for the Trojans and they bring the clock down in the third quarter with a penalty Chip Kelly before the ball was snapped was going crazy about looking at the formation illegal shift on the offense Linemen were going down their stance while a man went in motion. Five yards, replay third down. And while the man was in motion, one of the offensive linemen is getting down in position. He's, he's saying, I hope you see that. He's getting down. <laughs> he's trying to help him out. Try to catch a break over there. And he got the flag. <laughs> So now it is third and seven for the Trojans. Berkeley deflected incomplete, and USC must punt it back to Oregon. Well, there was a lot of traffic there. And Matt Barkley, who's made every decision tonight, has been a great decision. Really tough to be able to get it in there, and you go back to the illegal shift where they were able to get the first down. It took them back five yards, and that prevented them from getting the first down, and SC has to punt. Look at the wrap on that injured elbow as LaMichael James awaits this punt. McGreddy. LaMichael missed a couple of games because of that injury. And this one is out of bounds. And we will see where they mark it as we come to the end of the third quarter at the 25-yard line. This presentation to Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. Take a look at that comparison of points, total yards, and yards per play. And here come the Ducks with the first down, and Darren Thomas throws a strike to Huff. He's to the 31-yard line on that first down pass play, and a nice play it was. Well, down 18 points into the fourth quarter. It's not just about tempo, which Oregon is comfortable in doing. It's about execution and being able to move the ball down the field consistently in this last quarter, something they not be able to do in these first three quarters of the game. On second down, they run the Michael, and on a cutback, he's going to make a first down. And then the penalty flag comes flying as he's out at the 41-yard line. Just an awful holding penalty here by Darian Weems, the senior left tackle who, what was it, bear hug earlier? I'm looking forward to seeing what he calls this hold. How about mental error? Holding. By the offense, number 74. 10 yards, replay, second down. Remember earlier he called Grassu for a bear hug on a holding call. Watch Weems this time. He, he, not only does he put his right hand in, he, I mean, he's right there in front of every official. He just tackles Pollard, who's had the big night for the SC defense, right in the open field. <laughs> it's about four officials threw a flag at him. Weems, <laughs> Weems just sent you a memo. I thought I was on defense for a moment. <laughs> Sorry. Second and 14. And here's Barner who's on the field, and he keeps it. That ball is kept by the quarterback. Terrific play action. And Darren Thomas keeps it. And, and he was able to get by Lamar Dawson, the true freshman middle linebacker. He shook him right at the line of scrimmage, and that was the key there to getting downfield. Now it is Barner cutting the daylight. So after the fumble, but I believe he was down. I don't think there's any question about that. It'll be marked. 
Yeah, Darren Thomas holds the key here in the fourth quarter. His ability to throw the football, running enough to make the defense respect it, can open up things like that for Kenyon Barner and LaMichael James. Trailing by 18. We're going to take a peek at it. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field is that the runner was down prior to the ball coming loose. I remember that the replay official, Bill Richardson, has had a couple of tough calls here tonight. Wiley, the corner on the play, the knee is down there. The right knee is down, and then the ball comes out. Always better to be safe. Yeah, the one angle that you want to see on this is on the inside of the running back. You do see the knee down, but you don't see the ball with regard to the... You cannot turn it over. Now, we watch the ball. The ball doesn't look like it comes out until he's... Yeah, he can't turn it over. He no. has to First stand. Out. Chip's upset because it slows down the tempo that they're trying to create here. Trying to get this SC defense on its heels. The ball is on the 47-yard line. First down. There's that slip screen to the outside. And Gallipo. I don't see any penalty flags over there, even though the crowd thought it was a little bit of a late push. Gallipo hit him, and that was okay, but it was Wiley, 14, who kind of throws his arm into him and kind of pushes him down while Gallipo has him locked up around his ankle. Yeah, I agree. Now they come back with the running play, and Barner slips a tackle, and he's short of the first down, just short of it. If that spot is going to be correct. Now they move it up and give him the first down. Now they say it is a first down. So the ball across midfield. Ducks come back. And Kenyon Barner is carrying the load. Harris with the stop. And Kenyon Barner. Brings it to the 34-yard line. That's a nine-yard gain on that first down run. And at Oregon upset, there's going to be a, looks like they're going to stop the action to be able to get a measurement here. <laughs> Anytime the play slows down, Oregon sideline and, and this, the fans respond because they just want to keep going. You know, you're talking about slowing down. And believe it or not, an old friend of mine, who's a legend among basketball folks around the country, Paul Westhead, coaches the women's basketball team here at Oregon. He and Chip Kelly are very good friends. And last night I went over and watched Westhead's team, and they beat Illinois. And after the game, coach said to me, Brent, I'm sorry we didn't score 100 for you tonight, but thanks for coming. <laughs> West they love that attitude. Oh, it's beautiful. There's the first down pitch to the outside. And two and a working that sideline beautifully. And the Ducks are on the move again. Great throw, an accurate throw. Gave two and a a chance to catch the ball in stride and get downfield there for even more yards. Cross the 20. Darren Thomas complete to the nine yard line. Josh Huff. Good job coming off of his primary receiver. He wanted to go to his left. The defense was in good position to take that receiver away. He had to come all the way back to his right to find Huff. First down and goal for the on-charging Ducks. Barner, touchdown. Kenyon Barner, the backup for LaMichael James, delivers the touchdown. Now there's Oregon's offense. Running the football out in the open space. The linemen getting around in position. Good blocks on the linebackers. Look at the receivers blocking downfield. That's how Barner's used to running. And that time they were able to do that against this SC defense. But there is a player down. I believe it's Baylor. It is the fine linebacker, Dion Baylor. The redshirt freshman from Lakewood, California. One of the things that might be happening to Monty Kiffin's defense at this point, Herbie, is they're getting a little tired. They're getting a little exhausted. 
after they have played so well and so hard, and you have a backup running back like Kenyon Barner, you've got fresh legs up against that defense. Well, that, that was a big concern for Lane Kiffin and Monty Kiffin. It, it, their first unit on both sides can compete with about anybody, but the wear and tear, look at this, trying to just get off the field here by Bailey. But the wear and tear, you're right, of facing this tempo, how would they hold up throughout the second half, and especially here in the fourth quarter? Now the Ducks set up for the extra point. Maldonado tacks it on. 38 to 27. USC leads it. But the Ducks are mounting a serious rally. Oh, no. Choice Award for Best New Comedy. Tim Allen is last man standing. All new Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on ABC. And the last duck standing is right here in Eugene. Here we go now. Ducks trail it by 11. And this kickoff is fielded by Lee. Lee cuts the daylight. And he's out to the 35. And now for tonight's big picture brought to you by Sony. And we'll begin with last night. An enormous upset. Congratulations to Iowa State as they shot Oklahoma State. And then Clemson losing today and big against North Carolina State. And how about the youngsters from Penn State going on the road to Ohio State and winning a big one. And it's going to be for first place in Madison, Wisconsin next week. It'll be Penn State and the Badgers. They'll be battling for the leader's title in the Big Ten. Play action, Barkley. Barkley on a comeback route has got it. And if for a nine-yard gain, and what a freshman route there. What, what a great route. <laughs> what a, a really good throw from Matt Barkley. Crowds back into the game. Great call by Lane Kiffin. First and ten, continuing to be aggressive, trusting Matt Barkley out on the corner. He has been accurate all year outside of the pocket. Puts it low and away where Lee again can make a catch. Tonight again, Lee just continues to pile up the yards. 169 yards tonight. Tyler in as the Trojans running back. Aliotti has a safety creep closer. And, and the line judge saw the timeout signal by Kiffin. And so timeout, the Trojans will USC, stop it. Their first timeout of the half, full timeout. So we will take a break. Boy, I bet Chip Kelly would like to have that one decision back and kick the extra point, huh? To have this on 10. Your dad's really giving him the business. The designated. Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. We welcome you back to Eugene. Second down for the Trojans after their timeout. They need only a yard. McNeil is a tailback in this power formation. They run for it. Let me check that. That was Tyler who had checked in during the timeout. And let's go down below to Heather Cox to check on the uh, injured linebacker. Heather? Right, Brent. The Trojan defense certainly hoping to get Deion Bailey back. The medical staff is taping his right ankle. Coaches just came over to him and said, is it okay? And Deion responded, no, it's not okay. But I told the trainers to tape me up heavy. I missed the last big game. I'm not going to miss this one. We'll uh, see if he can return. Heather, I love to hear an attitude like that from a linebacker. He doesn't care about that injury right now. He wants to finish this game off. No question. On again and to midfield and that's McNeil as we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary then we compare Matt Barkley who's thrown for 275 yards and four scores and Michael James was not on the field for that last touchdown run he's rushed for 77 Tyler now in at running back one of the things that's going on here Herbie 
if Lane can continue to record first downs, he continues to move this clock and keep the ball away from the Ducks. And at this point, that clock is as important as anything to Lane Kiffin. Barkley is going to throw for it, and Ellison can't get the first down. But Ellison he, is going to be pushed out. Troy Hill was the defensive back on that side, but and he Brent, couldn't quite get it. Brent, he didn't go down. He actually landed on top of Hill, which kept the play alive. He kept fighting for yards. He's not down here. Hill goes down low, but his knee doesn't touch. He keeps the play alive and tries to get another yard or two. He's tracked. That play kind of is symbolic of SC's attitude tonight. You know what play that reminds me of? Michael Dyer. In the Dyer. championship game against Auburn when Dyer of Auburn reeled off that big run on Oregon when he didn't go down. Now it is third down and one. They muscle the running back. And it is a first down with Tyler. And let's go back and take a look at Barkley strikes. Uh, Barkley has had one of those nights because they've done a good job of protecting him. We knew the matchup to watch. His receivers, Lee and Woods, against the younger corners from Oregon. When they left them one-on-one, -on -one, how would Oregon hold up? They've done a great job all year not giving up big plays. Well, that's ended tonight against Matt Barkley and these wide receivers. It's one thing to face Andrew Luck and those tight ends. It's another thing to face Barkley when he's got Marquise Lee and Robert Woods. Different set of challenges for this Oregon defense. McNeil is the Trojan running back. He gets the call. No more than about a yard, and the clock is down to nine and a half minutes with the Ducks down by 11. Clay makes the stop. They've had the ball now on this drive over three minutes, and one thing about Lane Kiffin, because of the confidence that he has in a three-year starter in Barkley, it's affecting his play calling. It's not a run on every single down. Barkley is showing that he can make good decisions in the pass game, obviously, so he trusts him to be able to throw the ball and still be able to have completions to keep the clock moving. And it gives the Trojan defense a much-needed rest as they sit on the sideline and watch. Second and nine, and the clock comes inside nine minutes and a false start against USC. This will force them to start. put it up. By the offense, number 86. Five yards, second down. And that's the tight end, Grimble, redshirt freshman from Las Vegas, moving on that play as we come to the top of the hour. And for those of you doing a little channel surfing, welcome to Saturday night on ABC. USC upsetting Oregon 38-27. Second down and 14 for the Trojans. Ellison goes in motion. Barkley on that short drop. Pump fake comes back to the right side. High, intercepted. Picked off. And that's Boyette at the 40-yard line. And Barkley's complaining that there was holding on one of his receivers to no avail. Continues to complain. Brent, he looked to his left and came back to Robert Woods. And what he saw when he came back to Robert Woods, coming over from the right to the left, is Robert Woods being held by the corner, Ter Terrence Mitchell. And that's what held up him from getting in position to make the play. The ball is thrown up and behind him, the tip, and there's Boyette to make the interception. So Barner stays on the field as the running back. Bust to daylight across midfield. Kenyon Barner. McDonald makes a stop for the Trojans. And Kenyon Barner has given the Ducks a boost. And the thing Chip Kelly is doing with Barner in there is they're attacking outside. They're pulling linemen to get to the outside in the perimeter away from the teeth of this defensive line and linebackers. On first down, they slip the screen. Close to a first down is Vaughn. See, they're getting the ball away from the strength of this SC defense, the defensive line, and they're making that defensive line have to run, which can eventually slow them down and open up things in the middle. Kelly complaining that they weren't moving the chains fast enough, and that time they hustled into it. It is first and ten. The ball at the 34. Eight minutes remaining. Pump fake. Darren Thomas back. Incomplete. 
to an A on that far side, and it'll stop the clock, 7.55, second down and 10. Chip Kelly that time trying to get SC out of position. He went with that, that pump fake, trying to show that he was going to go with that quick pass to the outside, tried to get SC out of position, but the discipline that time was there by Wiley and TJ McDonald. They took the vertical pass away, and Thomas didn't have anybody open. Darren Thomas hands it to Kenyon Barner, breaks off left tackle. Is brought down by McDonald at the 22. These last couple drives, first time we've seen the offensive line get in position and they'll be able to open things up for Barner. Now they run it right straight ahead. The power game here with Kenyon Barner and Harris makes the stop on that play. And it will be second down now the ball is across the 20 yard line for the ducks they're down two scores remember la michael james who hasn't been in for a while checks into that backfield play action to him darren thomas down the middle one hand grab paulson battling for the end zone and wrestled back at the one foot line what a catch by david paulson the senior from Auburn, Washington. What a catch by Paulson, thrown into double coverage. And now straight ahead, touchdown Ducks. LaMichael James slips in. Here we go. Now we'll see if he comes back for two and tries to put this on a three. Well, he has to with seven minutes to go. He's he got to try to get it out on the field. They're going to go for two. Darren Thomas fakes it, rolls to the left, looks for a target. Caught at the back of the end zone by Tuane, and he was out of bounds. They're saying he was out of bounds. We'll take a look. Wow, another tough call for the replay booth. His left foot, I thought, came down. It's either touching the line or it's just in. Wow. Oh my. Definitely this have to take, and this is such an important call. This is a better look here. This goes upstairs to Bill Richardson. And what a night he's had. If you weren't with us, two tough calls and got him right, in our opinion, back in the first half. And now he's got this one in the back of the end zone. The previous play is under further review. The only on the field is an pass. It's such an important call by the booth upstairs with this being a five-point game, potentially a three-point game. The two looks that we saw there, the first was a little bit more removed, but the second, boy, it looked like there was just a little bit of green between his shoe and the line. I think he's in. Really, really close. <laughs> They've had three or four calls. You know, I would not want to be in that booth making these calls. This is a good, this is a closer look. I think you see a little green there. Well, regardless of the decision, the Trojans are about to get the ball for their most important drive of the night. 7.05 remaining. They'll either be up five or three. The runner controlled the pass, got his left foot in bounds, and controlled the ball throughout the process. The two-point conversion is successful. Maybe a timeout. So Lavashier Tuane follows up on a great grab by David Paulson. He sets this touchdown up almost battles his way into the end zone. Watch this grab. One-handed. The big tight end pulls it in. Maintains control. And from there, LaMichael James struck for six. 
real ice cream shakes are a great way to shake it off. By 24 points, 38 to 14. 21 unanswered by Oregon. And they're right back in it with 7.05. They are down a field goal, 38-35. Beard with the kickoff. Lee at the 20. Sideline bounced out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Go back to that play that set up the touchdown. Watch the linebacker, Gallipo, gets back into coverage. That's double coverage. One-handed grab. Here comes Starling. Three defenders there. He continues to fight to get into the end zone. This game at one point was 38-14. to Oregon has fought back and put themselves now in position where they're only down three. What an effort and attitude there by David Paulson. But the quarterback there and Thomas may have gotten away with that when thrown into the coverage. So McNeil in as the running back for the Trojans. Matt Barkley straight back. Middle caught at midfield on first down. And that was Grimble, the tight end from Las Vegas, making a big catch on first down. There's not a safety in the middle. The linebacker's got to be able to run with him, and he does a pretty good job of it. But the throw is thrown right over his shoulder. And outstanding catch by Grimble, the freshman tight end. He can get vertical against this Ducks defense. That's a 21. And now it is first down and 10. And the handoff is to McNeil. And he battles for a yard or two as we check in with Robert Flores. Just when you think you've got everything all figured out, they play again. Now there's a penalty flag, and that's a false start against Matt Barkley. But I want to take you back to Barkley's numbers here tonight. He is 25 of 33 for 301 yards, four touchdowns on the night for number seven. And now the biggest drive of the night, second down and 13. Make a note that when SC has been stopped, often it's they're stopping themselves with silly penalties and that interception on the last drive. Barkley finds the middle, and it's Lee in a foot race, and he's got the first down. The freshman here tonight with 187 yards receiving. And look how they are just over flooding the zone in the middle of that defense. The tight end Telfer sets up to the right, occupying the linebacker. And just when he thinks he has the tight end covered, here comes Marquise Lee, full speed coming into the inside of the defense. And Barkley found him for the big game. Coming down toward the five minute mark here in regulation. McNeil has rustled down quickly at the line of scrimmage, and the big fella got in on him, Hamuli. Ricky Hamuli out of Glendale, Utah. Ricky Hamuli that time just pushed the center, Khalid Holmes, right into the backfield. And not only that, not only did he disrupt the play, he was able to get off of Holmes and then be able to make the tackle for a short game. Allison is the fullback. They run power with McNeil. And they come up just a little shy of the 25-yard line, and that'll bring up the third down. They have to get to the 22 to move the chains. Interesting play call there on second down and long, where they decided to still run the ball. As much success as they have had uh, throwing the ball tonight on first and second down, so it sets up a big third down here for Kiffin and Matt Barkley. Leading by three, it is possible that Lane has decided this is four down territory and he decided to give himself third and short. Lee goes in motion 
and they hand it. They've got a first down easy to the 15-yard line, and so Lane Kiffin not only gets the first down with these calls, he keeps that clock moving. He motions Marquise Lee, and it's just enough of a, just something to distract the defense's eyes. They see Lee, who's a playmaker, going in motion to the offense's right, defense's left, and then they run the ball back with Tyler, who is, again, having a very productive night tonight, 11 carries and 52 yards. Look at the way they have mixed this up tonight with the run and pass. Very, very balanced attack with the selection of their plays. Continue to shuttle running backs. McNeil back in for the Trojans. First down for the 15. And it will be McNeil into the heart of that defense. And he gets close to the 10-yard line. So this is a punishing ball control drive with Lane sprinkling in a few passes to the middle of the field. At this point, Brent, with three minutes to go, with SC up by three, Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator for the Ducks, has got to be thinking they have got to hold SC to a field goal. A touchdown here pretty much puts SC in position to win the game. They've got to hold them in the red zone to a field goal. Tyler back in as a running back for Coach Palomalu. Long fumble! Ducks have got it! Brandon Hanna comes up with the football. The senior from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. The biggest turnover of the night. Brent, it's a stretch play, and Barkley tries to get the ball to Tyler. They've been flawless with the execution all night, and I don't think that Tyler ever opened up his arms to give the quarterback Barkley a hole. I don't know if he was thinking play action. Somehow they got crossed up. Barkley wanted to hand it off, and Mark Tyler looked like he was expecting the play fake and go play action. Hanna recovers his second fumble of the night. Kenyon Barner comes in as the running back. Darren Thomas on first down, incomplete. And it will be second down. Hayes Pollard is there. This is where Darren Thomas, who is 10th in the nation in passing efficiency and has had a good game tonight, throwing the football, 18 to 28, 227 yards, has got to make the good decisions. Deion Bailey back on the field, injured ankle and all. Kenyon! Jumps a tackler, has the first down to the 31-yard line, and he's down. Chip Kelly has been telling us for the last two years that Michael James is the guy, but they feel just as confident when Kenyon Barner gets a chance when he's healthy, and you can see it tonight. Moving quickly now, Darren Thomas throwing sideline. And the line judge will mark it down right there. Josh Huff coming up with the catch at the 36-yard line. And with two minutes and three timeouts, that is a lot of time for this kind of tempo from Oregon's offense. Now Darren Thomas is back. Pump fake. Hit. Sacked. Brought down by big Nick Perry from Detroit. Well, Perry against Weems on the left side has had more often than not a chance to make a lot of plays that time great coverage gave perry enough time to get to darren thomas 139 and counting darren thomas wants to set the screen wide open space with paulson the tight end for a first down a tight end screen clock stops quickly a minute and a half and here comes the offense clock stops with the first down what a call here with the blitz they brought a corner blitz along with two linebackers thomas recognizes it gets it off to paulson the ball at the ducks 43 yard line darren thomas throws pop. And that is DeAnthony Thomas. It's a wheel route out of the backfield. DeAnthony Thomas slips outside, and he's matched up there with Hayes Pollard. If Darren Thomas leads him, he walks into the end zone for a touchdown. 120. The ball is on the USC 43-yard line. Darren Thomas back to the middle, and it'll be second down and 10. Clock stops at 113. Gallipo, the defender. 
This is where Darren Thomas a lot of times executes at his best and where he is in command, much like Barkley for the SC offense, when they're in this warp speed, because he has run this offense so much, this offense may be going fast, but a lot of times Thomas makes his best decisions when he's got the defense on its heel. Kenyon Barner into the running back, into the flat. They throw back the other way. Wide open is Vaughn. Vaughn about a yard short of the first down. That's going to bring up a third down. And quickly, the Ducks get to the attack. Inside of a minute, down by three. Can send it to overtime with a field goal, win over the touchdown. Kenyon has got the first down. Kennard was hanging on, and it'll be a fresh set of downs with a clock stopping, and there's your field goal, man. Alejandro Maldonado. The reason Chip Kelly's not using his timeouts is because he wants to maintain this tempo. And it is stopping. There he goes. He timeout is has been called by the Trojans. Before the snap, timeout USC, their second timeout of the half. Full timeout. So they calmed it down. The Trojans clinging to a three-point lead. USC leading, but only by three. 38 seconds to go as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championship. Kenyon Barner stays as the running back. He's carried the load here in the fourth quarter for the Ducks. Barner slips to the right side and close to a first down with Roby making the stop about a yard shy. They then keep it not moving using now. the timeouts. They're in attack mode still. They've got the first down. This will stop the clock momentarily. The field goal long for Maldonado is 40 yards and a timeout now by Chip Kelly. He's going to run one here with Darren Thomas floating over to the left, firing high, and that will stop the clock. That was the signal by Kelly, not for timeout, but throw it high and stop it out of bounds. That was the hand signal into the quarterback from the head coach. And Lane Kiffin is very happy about the situation right now. I think he's trying to keep his team up and believing that they're going to find a way to hold on here and win this game. But again, it's worth mentioning to people watching Oregon, seeing that they have three timeouts and why they've allowed the clock to go off. It has everything to do with their momentum and trying to attack SC. Second down and 10 for the Ducks. Over to the left flat and nothing doing. That was 2 and A who made the catch and there was no space there and now with seven seconds to go the timeout has been used obviously with only seven seconds and we remind you that after this drama in Eugene stay tuned for the Ford wrap-up coming up right after tonight's game with all the speed that they have in DeAnthony Thomas LaMichael James Kenyon Barner and Josh Huff tough to get the ball to two and hey but this is what set this this opportunity up SC going in a fumble mix up there between Tyler and Barkley gave Oregon the ball back and gave him this chance here to tie it up maybe win it and Herbie it would be a 37 yard field goal from this point Maldonado's long is 40 and with two timeouts, exactly. they can run one play. They can run a play, and is it even worth taking a chance? I, why not just get it on the, in the middle of the field? Get it in the middle of the field and they call a timeout. This. They come over and they kneel down. There's a penalty flag, however. A false start. Oh, wow. Costly, that is. What a critical foul. By the offense, five yards, still third down. This foul does not require a 10-second subtraction from the game clock because the clock was dead at the time. Wow. Again, the left tackle, Darian Weems here, moving a little bit too quickly. They are set up to get this ball to the middle of the field to set up, make it easier on their kicker. He's going to take a knee right there. But this will be a career long, I believe, for Maldonado. So Alejandro from Colton, California. Alejandro Maldonado. He's 6 of 10. 
And his career long is 40 yards. And here comes the young man trying to send us into overtime. Wonder with Lane Kiffing. Lane Kiffin having one timeout. If he pulls that right up into the last second, try to add to the drama here and, and try to see if he can add to the pressure of Maldonado. He's no standing right by an official. It. No need taking it home with you. He's going to wait right before it snaps. There he wants it. And the timeout is given to USC. This would be about a 42 yard field goal for Maldonado. He's adding to the drama here, making Maldonado think about what, what's at stake. And for Oregon, all the, the talk about the BCS and Oklahoma State losing, and should it be Alabama, should it be Oregon? Oregon played a good game tonight, but they're playing a team that was very, very determined. 21 straight home wins. Longest af active streak in the FBS. And it is on the line. Maldonado for the tie. If this is good, we'll go to overtime. His career long. And now Khalil moved in the middle, and he's saying the center moved him. He better say somebody moved him. This is going against USC. It sure is. A member of the defense moved into the neutral zone, causing the offense to move. Offside. And he came the five yards back that Weems gave them earlier with the illegal procedure. Now, it's within his strike zone. So this to send us to overtime. Maldonado on the way, pulled it left. No good. USC upsets Oregon. Another big player in the BCS drama falls. A fabulous performance by Matt Barkley tonight. 323 yards and four touchdowns. And Lane Kiffin, the play caller, comes away with his biggest win ever no, at USC. No question about it. Congratulate USC for coming into Autzen Stadium, the most difficult place to play in the Pac-12. And Lane Kiffin did an outstanding job of preparing his team and getting them ready for this game. And he's down below with Heather Cox, so let's go to Heather now. Brent, thanks so much, Lane. Congratulations on the win. What kind of statement did this make tonight? Well, I don't know. It's the next game, but it was awesome for... This is all about our fans and our players. They've been through so much. They've had so much taken away from them, and we just keep moving those clouds away and just so happy for our fans and our players. You talk about so much being taken away because of the NCAA ban. Because of that, how much was this a conference championship game for you guys? I don't know. You know, they're a great team. Coach, Coach Kelly does an unbelievable job, and there's players played their heart out today. And, Pretty fun to see our young guys come away. Certainly very exciting. Now, the last two years, you guys lost by combined 48 points. How does this help erase the memories of the past? Well, I don't remember that. <laughs> Short-term memory. Coach, thanks. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Indeed, Heather. Congratulations to Lane Kiffin and the entire coaching staff at USC. This was a fabulous performance, and this was the kick that ended it. Pulling it to the left, and the Trojans hang on. And again, Herbie, we go to the last play <laughs> of a game to decide it. Yeah, it seems like everywhere we show up, it goes down to the last play. But Matt Barkley, uh, there late in the game, the interception, the, mis the miscue there with Tyler in the backfield gave Oregon a chance. The Ducks almost got back in position to tie it or win it. But the kicker could not come through. Maldonado and Lane Kiffin's team escapes with a great victory for this program. Let's go back to Heather now. She's got the quarterback. 
Matt, congratulations. Moments ago, you spent quite some time with your coach, Lane Kiffin, and Embrace. What did you guys tell each other? Gosh, we pulled this off. It's about time we pull off a game like this. And, I mean, there were moments when we could have put it out. But our defense, uh, special teams, pulled it out at the end. I mean, praise the Lord, this game could have gone the other way. Uh, but finally, you know, the Trojans pulled one out. It feels great. You were in so much control throughout this game. But the game, the drive to determine the game, you had to stand on the sidelines and watch as Oregon drove the field. What were you thinking during that final drive in the missed field goal? I was thinking back to years past when our defense has given up big games like that. But, but this year, we're a different team. And, and we pulled together big wins towards the end of games. And tonight was just another one of those games where, where our defense made plays. They didn't let them score, and it came down to special teams, and, and we made the plays. Matt, go enjoy this win. Congrats. Brent? And Heather, the Pac-12 North goes to a silver.